Dick, it's uh, my pleasure. At ESPN, ESPN believes in giving back to the communities that we work in, and we work hard at it. Our employees do an awful lot giving back, but this year we want to honor Dick Vitale as our 2011 ESPN Volunteer of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I, I tell you one thing, he's the best boss anybody could have, and I'm not trying to get a new contract because, man, when you're 71 years old and you got like five years left on your contract, you don't want any more years. But uh, I, I could tell you this, George, and I would tell it to the people. George Bodenheimer, when I first met him, he said he was a driver. He would pick me up at the airport. I would go and he would start to moan and groan. Where am I going, Dick? Where am I going with my life? I got a brilliant degree at Denison and they have me in the mail room. And I'm in the mail room, and I'm a driver. I'm going nowhere, nowhere. And I kept saying to him, George, someday you're going to make it. There's something about you, and the coaches in the house here, the Hall of Famers, the people like Roy and Jim Calhoun and Larry Brown, and guys that have coached on a big-time level, all the greats that are gathered here, they know what a player. They either have it or they don't have it. This guy had it. Well, I'll never forget one day. All of a sudden, he came to ESPN in 1981. I was there in 79. Did the very first game in the history of the network. When he called me up to do a game, Scotty Connell, I said, ESPN? Hey, man, that sounds like a disease. What is ESPN? <laughs> Little did I know it became a disease, but I will never forget. 1998, I'm at the airport in Atlanta. I'm ready to connect, and I open up USA Today, and I look. And I see this headline, named the president of ESPN, George Bodenheimer. I said, holy God, that's my driver. I can't believe it. I called up, true story, I called up his office. I got his secretary. I said, I don't want to talk to George. Give me his answering machine, and I want to leave a message. And I left the message. I'm going nowhere with my life. What am I doing? I'm going nowhere, to, nowhere at all. And then I said, George, I don't want a wristwatch, baby. Get me a new contract. And I'll tell you this, hey, you have taken care of me, baby, big time. You have done a great job. You're a terrific. You never forgot where you came from. I, I want to say this, though, tonight. Thank you, thank you. Aaron and Josh were up here. Cougar Town, unbelievable. The guy gets paid, paid for making love to Courtney Cox. Are you serious? I thought I had a great job. Are you kidding me? Wow. But let me tell you this. You saw all those celebrities. They have so many demands on their time. And they're all here tonight. Everyone paid their own way. Everyone pays their own expense. Many give us a donation. I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for your generosity, for your time. And to me, as I looked at that crowd up here, and I turned to Roy Williams, I said, to who's who, my friend, Sarasota, to who's who in the sports world tonight, I can't thank all of you enough. On behalf of Jimmy V, I know he's up in heaven, and I know he's on cloud nine, knowing we're here, letting his dream continue on. So please, another ovation. What a, what a thank you I have to say to three gorgeous ladies, three ladies that have played a vital role in making this gala happen. This doesn't happen overnight. Joyce Sasserman, I can't thank you enough. Thank you enough for all you have done. Unbelievable. Her passion, her love. Oh, we battle sometimes about things, but the bottom line, she cares. Mary Keneally. Mary Keneally is the best. She's the best party planner in the whole business. They don't get any better. 
And then the third one, the most important in my life, my wife. My wife, Lorraine, flat out Hall of Famer. Flat out. When I was inducted into Hall of Fame, I told that crowd, I've been with Hall of Famers all my life. My mother and father were Hall of Famers. Fifth grade education, but a doctorate of law. She taught me my mother one unbelievable. I shared it with George today and his beautiful bride, Anne. They came and we were taking a tour of my home. And we went into my bedroom area and I have a picture there with my mom and dad. I'm like five years old, I got hair on my head. You don't believe that, but I do. I have hair on my head. And I remember I was told George, my mother taught me one simple philosophy. She always say in her uneducated way, fifth grade educated, but a doctor to love. She said, Richie, Richie, if you're good to people, people will be good to you. My God, I look back at that simple philosophy of life. People have extended an open hand to me 71 years that have exceeded any dream I ever had, doing something I love, talking about a game, getting paid handsomely, and then married to a woman. 40 years we'll celebrate on Sunday. And she's